Before we begin, I just want to say that I'm not going to be taking a look at Resistance Burning Skies as I do not own a PlayStation Vita and I do not own that particular game. Having said that, let's begin. On November 17th, 2006, the seventh generation console war officially began as Sony released their brand new video game system, the PlayStation 3. With the release of Sony's new hardware, of course, came a batch of new games. By far the most anticipated of this batch of new games was a first person shooter called Resistance Fall of Man from Insomniac Games who had previously made a name for themselves doing games such as the Ratchet and Clank series on the PlayStation 2 and the Spyro Trilogy on the PlayStation 1. Prior to this, they were known for 3D platformers that were bright, colorful, vibrant, with a great sense of humor. Fun and interesting characters in their games tended to be not all that serious at all. Resistance Fall of Man said fuck all that and was a much more serious experience. Much more dour, much darker and a lot more gritty than anything that they had previously been known for. What this did was present you with an alternate timeline, kind of a what-if scenario. What if World War II did not happen because people in Europe were far too busy dealing with the threat of an invading alien force known as the Chimera? And there was a lot of backstory that actually went into this. You could tell that Insomniac Games, the creator of the Resistance franchise, really poured everything they had into this. Because they had a website that detailed the entire timeline and backstory of this game. And there was a lot. I don't know what happened to that. I don't know if it's still up. I kind of doubt it is at this point. But it was really cool to see them put that much work into this game's backstory. As for Resistance itself, it sees you taking control of an American soldier named Nathan Hale. He is sent along with his squad to England to help out fighting the Chimera, who at this point have not made it to U.S. soil as of yet. While you travel across Europe, you run across two particular soldiers named Rachel Parker and Stephen Cartwright, who you will interact with multiple times over the course of the game and they're kind of important characters in this first game. This first game really is not all that big on building character development. It's much more interested in world building and you will be doing plenty of that. You will learn a lot about the Chimera, the invasion, what Europe has been dealing with and all that kind of stuff as you travel throughout this game. And the more you look and try to find secrets, the more you will find and learn because there are all kinds of intel files that detail the world around you and there are plenty of intel files. There's at least one for every single kind of enemy in the game that'll give you more information on every single one of them. So if you are a big fan of getting deep into a game's lore, there's plenty here for you and it's worth your time to actually do some exploring and not just move forward and shoot everything that moves. Beyond a fairly in-depth lore and world, what made Resistance Fall of Man so special? First and foremost, this game had really cool weapons. If you talk about Insomniac and the various games that they make, one of the very first things that most people would bring up is that they have really cool weapons, especially in the Ratchet and Clank series. That's no different here. You have weapons such as the Bullseye that lets you tag enemies and then... You can shoot them even when they sneak into cover because your bolts will curve around and hit them. It's really, really cool that they follow them to an extent. You have a sniper rifle that slows down time. You have the auger which throws up a shield and can shoot through walls. And there are other weapons as well. There's a lot of really cool weapons in this game that are a lot of fun to use. They all have alternate fire modes. And going through it a second time actually let, nets you additional weapons that you don't get on your first playthrough. So there's replay value there as well. Uh, the enemy designs in this are really, really cool. The Chimera are one of the more interesting enemies, in my opinion, in all of first-person shooters. And if you know me and know this channel, then you know I love me a good first-person shooter. I love the enemies. I love the lore. I love 
so much about this series. It's so very, very good. Um, this also will pit you against just tons of enemies on the screen at any given time. And the sheer amount of enemies that you face on screen at any given time without the game slowing to a crawl was a real testament to the power of the PlayStation 3. Obviously, it's not the sharpest looking game now. I'm not even sure it was the sharpest looking game in 2006, but... It wasn't ugly, but the sheer amount of enemies that it crammed on screen without slowing down was rather impressive, especially for a console. Prior to this, we had not seen anything quite like it, and it's a lot of fun. You can also play through the single-player campaign with a friend with couch co-op if you so choose. This is also a lot of fun, and I played through it more than once this way. This single-player campaign will keep you busy for a good 12 hours or so. It's pretty beefy. All the single-player campaigns in the Resistance franchise are fairly lengthy. There's a lot to keep you busy here. Beyond this, though, and unfortunately the servers have been shut down, this had 40-player multiplayer rounds. That You had a fairly standard arrangement of modes, but the big deal with it was you could play as the humans or the Chimera, and they did play differently. The Chimera were able to run faster than the humans were, so that was one advantage they had. The humans had an advantage, and I'll be damned if I remember what it was. It's been too long. But this did have fully featured multiplayer. I can't show you that because the servers have been shut down. But for what it was, especially at the launch of a new console, it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. I spent quite a bit of time playing it. For It seemed for a while that, at least until sometime in 2007, this was the most talked about game in uh, the PlayStation 3 library. And it actually, probably in a shining moment for Insomniac Games, it was either a tournament or part of a tournament on GameSpot, which means that they had professional players playing their game, streaming online with commentators talking over the footage and doing interviews with the people that were playing the game and that had to be really really cool for them I know I remember watching that and rather enjoying it myself I was really happy to see a game that I absolutely love get representation on one of those things which frequently does not happen as I don't play multiplayer all that often resistance one did have recharging health but your health bar was divided into quarters and it would only recharge to the nearest quarter that you had lost partial health in so you still had to have health pickups in this game you could also carry all of your weapons at once, which is something that it doesn't make any sense in a first-person shooter, but it's something that I have been used to for so long from first-person shooters that I kind of prefer it. Like, I've been doing that kind of thing since Doom back in the mid-90s, you know? So, I prefer to have my entire loadout at my fingertips at all times. And this game did that. It didn't conform to the... Uh, more modern standards set by Halo 2 or games like that. To get around the fact that you don't have number keys to instantly switch to the different weapons that you want to, this game actually let you bring up a weapon wheel which would pause the action and you would select your weapon from it. It was quick and easy to use and it worked quite well so you didn't have to just cycle through every single time you wanted to switch weapons. All in all, Resistance was the complete package, and it was a great first-person shooter at the launch of the PlayStation 3. If you've never played it, I would recommend going back to play it. Like any good first-person shooter that establishes a new world, Resistance was bound to get a sequel. And it did in the form of Resistance 2, which takes place directly after the at ending of the first game. It literally starts where the first game left off. It sees you taking the fight across the seas and coming back to America, where you will fight across the United States and a variety of levels set here. Resistance 2 did make some changes to the formula that I didn't particularly like. It gave you a two-weapon limit and completely recharging health, which I'm a bigger fan of health packs. I think it makes more sense. I've never really been a big fan of recharging health. And again, maybe this game will work better with completely recharging health than with health packs. I'm not entirely sure, because this game does manage to stand out in other ways. 
One, it is definitely a much better looking game than the first Resistance game, and it manages to cram even more enemies on screen, which are better looking, still without major slowdown. That is truly an impressive feat, for sure. This game would put you in some scripted sequences that were truly impressive against massive enemies, or put you in intense in situations where it seemed the waves of enemies just never ended and it was highly memorable in this regard that there was a gigantic Godzilla sized monster that you fought in Chicago that is one of the most memorable scenes I've ever played through in a first person shooter it was really really impressive and in this sense it really kind of made up for its shortcomings I would still rank it below Resistance 1 and Resistance 3 both, but that doesn't mean it's a bad game by any stretch of the imagination. It's still a very, very good game. And the way it continues the story is very likable. Once again, you play as Nathan Hale, you're making your way across the United States and you have a squad that follows with you everywhere. And you get to know these guys over the course of the game and once again, the focus is more on world building in the United States than it is on character building. So none of them have too much of an in-depth personality, but it is always nice to see returning characters. New ones that will travel with you from beginning to end. And you certainly get that here. One of the features about this game that I really like is that occasionally you'll run across a radio that will be playing a radio broadcast that will keep you informed about the ongoings all across the United States as he reports the news. It's a really nice touch that lets you fill in more lore from the world as you play throughout the game. It's actually really cool and really fun. I quite like that about this game. The multiplayer is still more of a standard suite, but it increases player count from 40 to 60 so the chaotic battles of the first resistance game with the 40 players and the two sides where the resistance fighters and the chimera play differently that chaos is increased in this and it is even more nuts than it was in the previous game it was a lot of fun as well and this multiplayer as well as the co-op mode which I'll discuss in just a second is the main reason that I played this particular game a lot more than the other two in the Resistance franchise. I loved this multiplayer a lot. It was really, really enjoyable. But the main draw for me was the co-op mode. And this wasn't a traditional co-op mode. You didn't play through the single-player campaign co-op, which I wish Insomniac would have added that in. I would have loved to co-op through the campaign with other people, but the co-op mode that we did get was really cool. You had three classes that you would choose from, and you would fight off waves and waves of enemies together. There was a scout class that would use longer range weapons with scopes on them. There was a heavy class that would use larger, more damaging weapons with shields to keep protect the team. And then there was a healing class that does the least amount of damage to the enemies, but can throw out healing items and heal your teammates. The scout class was the one that restocked ammo, so you really, really needed all three. But if you got a good team working together, it was a lot of fun. You would mow down enemies and accomplish objectives and hopefully complete each mission. Because there were missions, there were end goals. It wasn't just horde where you're fighting wave after wave after wave. And you would gain experience as you played throughout it, and you would level up your characters. and. This was the most addicting part, was trying to get all three classes to the highest level and be as good as you could possibly be and unlock all the different rewards and everything. Cause, but it was a lot of fun to play. I really, really liked it. I spent so many hours on this, just building up these classes and leveling up a bunch and just accomplishing objectives with people and stuff like that. And it was a hell of a lot of fun. Resistance 2, despite... A, a couple of shortcomings here and there. It was a great game. It was a great sequel to the first game. I still 
think I prefer the first game overall for its campaign, but this is no slouch either, and like I said, it's got some of the most memorable moments in any first-person shooter campaign that I've ever played. The next big Resistance game would transfer over to a new studio, Sony Bend, and would transfer over to a new platform, that being the PlayStation Portable. And this was called Resistance Retribution. In Resistance Retribution, you take control of a new character named James Grayson, who was part of the British Army under Stephen Cartwright, who we talked about previously. He entered into a Chimeran factory while they were attacking them. He found his brother there. His brother was turning and had to be killed, which caused him to get really, really pissed off with the Chimera. He went AWOL and disappeared from the army. He started traveling all over England and blowing up Chimera conversion centers. Eventually, the army catches up with him. They capture him and court-martial him and condemn him to death. While he's waiting in his cell to die, the French Marquis, the resistance in France, shows up at his doorstep and says, and says, we know that you know far better than anybody else how these conversion centers work, and we need that expertise on some missions that we're taking care of. So we will get you out of here if you will come with us and fight alongside us. And that's exactly what happens in this game. Resistance Retribution is a third-person shooter on the Sony PlayStation Portable. And I know you're immediately thinking, oh no, this cannot be all that good because it's only got one thumbstick and not two. But the developer, Sony Ben, knew this ahead of time and used a clever, clever trick to get around it. Which is to say, you don't have to precise aim much at all. You can press forward on the D-pad and go into a precise aiming mode. But most of the time, you're going to be using the face buttons to move a square on the screen. And James Grayson will aim at anything within that square. And this alleviates a lot of the frustration that would have come from having to precise aim at enemies. And it works exceptionally well. It allows the standard resistance experience to transfer, transfer well to the PlayStation Portable. And once again, the number of enemies that they're able to cram onto the PlayStation Portable screen without significant slowdown here is truly impressive. And this game is a lot of fun because of it. Um, it does have a cover system. If you approach cover, he will automatically duck down into it or press against the wall or something like that. And you hold down the fire button to pull out from cover and shoot at enemies. It works really well and it will save your ass a lot of times because just circle strafing and stuff like that really isn't going to get you through this game. It's a bit tougher than that. This is not the easiest game in the world to get through. In fact, I would say none of the resistance games are the easiest games in the world to get through. They're not going to hold your hand, which is another thing that I really like about them. They're not exceptionally hard, they're not brutally difficult, but they're not cakewalks either. On a technical level, obviously it's a step back from what the PlayStation 3 games can do, but, but given that this is a handheld system from 2005, what is here is actually rather impressive, and it runs pretty damn well. This is a pretty game to look at it by PlayStation Portable standards. I really like the design and everything. And there's a lot to like about this game. Uh, the interesting and fun weapons from the previous game pretty much return here. You get the auger. You get a replacement for the bullseye called the razor. And you get the revolver and a few other weapons. that You can hold down the right button to bring up the weapon wheel. Or you can just quick tap it to cycle through to different guns. It works pretty well. This is kind of a more personal experience than previous games. This game really kind of scales back on the large epicness of the two previous Resistance games to tell a more personal story, and I think that really works in its favor. Fitting the large-scale kind of stuff onto the PlayStation Portable would have been challenging, so I think this was a good route to go. You get to know your character a lot better than you ever did with Nathan Hale. You get to learn about him, his motivations, you get to see him interact with past characters like Cartwright and Parker, 
and new characters like the guys in the marquee and it's all well done the story is interesting and it does fit well within the resistance franchise it feels like a proper resistance story quite frankly i'm just impressed that they managed to pack down the resistance style of gameplay and make it work well on the playstation portable that alone was really impressive and the game itself is well designed and a lot of fun you can plug your PlayStation Portable into your PlayStation 3 and connect it with Resistance 2, which will allow you to access additional features. Two in particular. You can infect the PlayStation Portable, which gives Grayson the Chimera virus, which allows him to breathe underwater, and it gives him regenerating health and a few other things. I think it also tweaks the difficulty. You can also set it up so that you can use your PlayStation 3 controller to control the game. This works pretty well as well. Although this does make the game harder because it was not in design from the ground up to be played this way. You have to do precision aiming this way and the aiming can be a little sluggish. It's not the preferred way to play but if you really want to connect your PlayStation Portable to your TV if you have a 2000 or 3000 or later version and play it on the big screen with the PlayStation 3 controller that is an option and it's actually pretty goddamn cool that it's there the multiplayer is also fully featured it's scaled back to eight players as you might expect but all the features of and modes and leaderboards and everything that you liked about the multiplayer experience on the two major console games is brought here it was truly impressive when this game was released to see that kind of multiplayer brought to a handheld console. We had never really gotten something this fully featured on a handheld before. So that was a lot of fun. Unfortunately, I can't show you that either because, again, I can't even get my PlayStation Portable co to connect to the internet anymore. But I did play this a fair bit back in the day and I enjoyed it quite a bit. Resistance Retribution is a great game for any PlayStation Portable owner. I really, really like it, and I would highly recommend it. The final game in the Resistance franchise that we're going to be talking about here today is the finale to the original trilogy, Resistance 3, which once again takes place in America, and it's kind of a journey game in a similar sense to something like Naughty Dog's The Last of Us, which sees you and uh, another person traveling all the way across the United States and you go from location to location and deal with enemies as you go move along and you see how things have changed for the Chimera over the course of the game you let me start off by saying you don't play as Nathan Hale I'm not gonna say why I'm not going to spoil that for you if you have not played the resistance franchise part of this but you do not play as Nathan Hale you play as Joseph Capelli, who was one of Hale's squad mates in the previous game. And this, I think, Insomniac actually did learn from Sony Ben's game on the PlayStation Portable, because like that game, this one tells a more personal story. Joseph Capelli has a bit more personal motivation than Nathan Hale does, and he's got a bit more uh, character development here as well than Nathan Hale ever did, to be honest. And... I kind of like that about this game. This might be the best of the trilogy. It really is very, very good. At the time of release, it was criticized for being brown, but every single game released during this cycle was always brown all the time. So I don't think that's a huge deal. Plus, there are other levels where you have other dominant colors. The nighttime level in... Pennsylvania, for instance, is largely dominated by dark blues. So there's definitely variety in uh, environment and things like that that you'll travel through as you fight the Chimera. In this game, you're much more of a normal human being. You don't have regenerating health at all, and the weapon wheel is back, which I really appreciate. This wound up giving the Resistance franchise a definitive end at the end of the game. And it was a good one. It was a memorable story with some very memorable levels. I love the one set in the prison. That was a lot of fun. Kind of a change of pace to not be fighting the Chimera, to be fighting other people. That was really, really cool. I liked that a fair bit. 
And there were levels where you went underground. There were levels where you were digging through tunnels. There were all kinds of stuff in this game. It was a lot of... Insomniac always put a fair bit of effort into every single campaign that they got. And every single one gave you more lore on the Chimera and more lore on the United States and the rest of the world and the state of it all and how things have gone just terrible for the human beings. I mean, things have gotten even worse for humans in this game than it was in the previous two. We basically lost the war at this point. Obviously, being the last game in this trilogy, this is the best looking of the three. And once again, it runs pretty stably as well. So that's always nice to see. And Insomniac, along with Naughty Dog, always got great work out of Sony's machines. They were always producing high-end graphics for every single exclusive that they did. And Resistance 3 is no exception to this. This is a very pretty game. One thing that I like more about this campaign than the previous two is it seems to have more variety than the previous two. There's the level where you're thrown in prison and you have to escape while all these people are trying to hunt you down. There's a level where you're stuck on a boat and your movement is fairly limited. And you go back and forth between fighting what they call feral chimera and the more intelligent kind and you get different fighting experiences depending upon which kind you're fighting and that was really cool gave more variety to in not only enemy types but it gave more variety to not only enemy types but how the enemies interacted with you as you played throughout it which really helped lend to the variety in the game which I again I really really liked this is probably the most varied campaign of the entire franchise, bearing in mind that I have not played Burning Skies, but I didn't really touch on the multiplayer in this one. I never really got in, I don't know why I never played the multiplayer, but I've never been big on multiplayer in the first place. I'm surprised I played multiplayer on 1, 2, and Retribution as much as I did, considering that it's never been my big focus. I wanted these games for the story, I wanted them for the lore, I wanted them for the world building and the first, the awesome first person shooting action, the cool enemy designs, the cool weapons, all that kind of stuff that really helped make Resistance stand out above the rest. And this really, thanks to all this, it really helped carve a specific place out in FPS history for the Resistance franchise. I really, really like this series. And I would love to see it continue someday. And this was very much Insomniac's baby. Not only did they have the three games and the spin-off Retribution, which they probably had a hand in the development of, I'm not entirely sure. But they there were books, there were comics, there were toys. This series was a big deal back then, and... I would love to see it return. If Insomniac, if you're watching, I would love to see this series return on the PlayStation 4. First off, I would love to see this series get a full 1080p, 60fps port of the trilogy. If you could throw in Retribution in some way, I would love that too. For the PlayStation 4, that would be amazing. Second of all, find another way to continue this series. I'm sure there are other stories you could tell within the Resistance universe that were happening along alongside Hale and Capelli's story that would present us with another awesome Resistance campaign. And I would love for that to happen because I really, really like this series. I liked this series so much that I actually went out and bought a book or two back in the day. But, but yeah, the Resistance franchise turned 11 years old. I adored this series. I've spent a lot of time during the seventh generation of consoles playing through them. Big thank you to Insomniac Games for creating this series and Sony Ben for creating the PSP spin-off game. I absolutely adored it, and hopefully someday we will see more. Hopefully we have not seen the end of this franchise. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe down below. It will be greatly appreciated. We'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks, everybody, and goodbye.